Hey guys, welcome to the Photography Brand Summit. I am going to talk to you today about how to design workflows and systems that work for you, and I am so excited to do so. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Laura from Laurelly Creative, and I am a wedding photographer and a brand photographer in northern New Jersey. And in addition to that, I educate photographers and creatives on workflow, systems, and all things that kind of lead to work-life balance, or at least work-life harmony. So I'm really, really excited today to talk to you guys about workflow and how it can benefit your business and help you scale your business, grow, save time, and just so much more. So we're going to dive right in real quick. And I want to talk to you guys about what you will learn today. So we're going to talk about what a workflow is and what it needs to include, how to create your workflows, how to grow and scale your business, how to manage clients efficiently, five ways to uplevel your client experience by being proactive and how I figure out smart systems in my business. So first, before we get into the content, I just want to make a PSA to turn off your phones or close out of some browser tabs that I'm sure you have at least 27 open if you're like me. So I just want to let you guys focus on the next 20, 25 minutes of content and it's going to be jam packed. So get your favorite notebook out, get a pen out or open up a Google doc and I'm super excited to get started. So. First, we are going to talk about what a workflow is. So simply a workflow is all the steps that it takes to complete a project or process. So a workflow must be step by step. One task must flow into the next workflow. That's where it comes from. And every task needs to be included on it, no matter how small. So the things that you absolutely must include in your workflow are tasks, subtasks, due dates for every task and subtask, an assignee if you're delegating it to somebody else, so somebody else on your team who's going to take that task. Client education, such as FAQs or what I like to do with my wedding clients is send them emails throughout their process with me of educational blog posts that I've written. So I have a blog post on what to wear for your engagement session and whether or not you should have an unplugged ceremony. The answer is always yes. But I have all these blog posts that I've written and I don't think that my clients are going back on my blog two years. And since this is evergreen content, I just built into my workflow to send them an email to a link, like linking to that blog post. So client education, that could be FAQs, it could be blog posts, email newsletters, stuff like that. Any email communication that you have with your client should also be included in your workflow. Any client follow-ups during the inquiry process and all the client documents that you need to be sent that you need to send them. So questionnaires, brochures, your pricing guide when they inquire, your wedding guide if you send that in the mail. So I send a wedding guide to all my couples in the mail right after they book. It's an 88 or so page document that I send them of just working with me, the process, what to expect. And then also in your workflow so that you don't forget are client gifts and client meetings. So I have a couple meetings with my clients throughout the process. After the consultation, we have a meeting to go over the timeline and the family shot list. And then down the road closer to the wedding, we'll just have a meeting to go over that one last time, make sure everything is all good before the actual wedding day. So once you have all of these things, um, those are just what is to include. So now it's time to talk about how you actually design a workflow. So creating workflow part one is to design your workflow in sections or stages. So since this is a photo brand summit, I will use photography as an example. And for me in my wedding photography business, I would have these sections and stages of my workflow. So just think of these as like the bold headline of these aren't necessarily tasks. These are just the headlines. So the inquiry process, the booking process, client onboarding, questionnaires and getting to know my clients after they book, the engagement session prep, engagement session photographing, post-production for the engagement session, pre-wedding prep, uh, wedding day planning, photographing the wedding, wedding post-processing, album design and sales sessions, and accounting, backup, and archiving. So these are just sections that I'm creating in my workflow as a header so that I can then kind of just break it down into sections. That's how my brain works. And so I want to break it down into sections and then I'm going to start putting the tasks, the subtasks, the emails, the documents, all of the things that were on the previous slide. We're going to put all of those into each of these sections. And every section might not have all of the things on that slide above, but we are definitely going to have a handful, at least emails and tasks in every single section. So after I have figured out all my sections, 
Then I am going to write out all the tasks and subtasks in each section. So for example, the section wedding day plans, that would be for me sending the wedding day questionnaire, the vendor questionnaire, receiving my clients' responses, creating the timeline, the family formal list, reaching out and introducing myself to vendors, sending the insurance to the venue, having a pre-wedding meeting to go over the timeline and family formal list, which I just talked about, and sending vendors the wedding day timeline. So once I have all the tasks and subtasks and the emails and everything in here, like you'll also see questionnaires are included in this section, then I can go one step further and I can design by day. So for example, I'm going to use post-production as an example now. Um, after the wedding, I have everything designed by day. So on day one after the wedding, or the, this actually happens the night of the wedding, I'll import my memory cards into Photo Mechanic, rename the files, back them up to an external hard drive, back them up to a stationary hard drive, and sort them into sections for culling. So I don't call everything all in one giant folder because that's super overwhelming to me. So I write out all of the things and what day they're going to happen. So this is me setting the due date. And What's super important here is that you need to write things out in the order that they happen. It can't just be a random checklist of stuff. It has to flow one task into the next. And then if you want to take it one step further, if you're considering outsourcing, I actually started this workflow on a piece of paper and I started color coding everything that would be outsourced and different subcontractors had different color highlighters. I just love color coding things. So from there, after I had my workflow all figured out on paper, I put it into a Google Doc, transferred those color codings over into a Google Doc, and then from there, I even took it and put it into HoneyBook, which we're going to talk about a little later. But um, once you have all of this figured out, then you can see which tasks might be able to be delegated. So let's talk about outsourcing really quick and how I figured out what I was going to outsource. So once you have your workflow written out, I would suggest printing out the Google Doc or Word document or wherever you're housing that workflow. I suggest printing it out and rating every single task on a scale of one to five if you love it, if you hate it, and then just put a star if you absolutely have to be the person to do it, or put an X if you don't need to do it yourself. And this does not mean that every single task that is a hate it or an X, it does not necessarily mean that you are going to outsource that, but as you grow and scale your business, which we'll talk about soon, you are going to be able to start handing things off slowly. So after you do all this research, you can start researching which companies and which subcontractors or private companies you can hire in order to do the things that you don't like or that you don't need to do. So for me personally, I have an editor who does the editing for the main gallery. So I edit everything that goes on the blog, on Facebook, on my website and in the album. So basically anything the public sees, I edit and then I send everything off in Lightroom to my editor and they will edit the main gallery. So they'll basically just sync to my edits. And then I also outsource album design. It is still in house with one of my team members, but I pick the pictures for it and then they design the actual album spreads and then I'm able to proof it before it goes out to our couple. But if you aren't lucky enough to have a team member in house, then I highly suggest a line album design. They are amazing for designing and my album designer is actually my mom. She's also a photographer and incredible. So I am super lucky to have that and have her as part of the team. And then formatting blog posts. This is something that I have recently been handing off as I've been growing Laurelly Photography and Laurelly Creative, the educational side of my business. So I had a virtual assistant who will format my blog post, she'll take my Google Doc and she'll format everything. So I just really went through all my workflows and did this little exercise and then I slowly started handing things off. And before I go into the next section, I just want to let you guys know that I have a free gift for you. So if you go to the link on the screen, bit.ly slash photo brand summit. I actually have a free guide for you guys on 10 workflow hacks for photographers. So this is just going to be a super quick ebook that you can download for free and it'll just give you some additional tips beyond what we are going over today. So that is free for you guys and I hope you'll go snag that. And so once you actually have your workflow in place, then 
all the super fun things get to happen, like you are able to grow your business and scale your business. And this means that you will finally be able to be the CEO and not the employee of your business all the time. So you can work on your business and not in it. It also gives you, you the ability to get ahead of your to-do list. And the best part is that it elevates your client experience like crazy. And guys, so I did not have any workflows in 2015. Not only was I drowning, not only did I burn out, but I had a mediocre client experience. And when I was trying to break into the luxury market, that is not okay. You cannot have a mediocre client experience if you want to be in that high end market. You have to deliver a high end experience. So I started implementing workflows and the craziest thing happened between 2015 and 2016. My referrals increased from my brides by 1200%. And I was literally dumbfounded when I figured out this number. I almost fell off my office chair, but they were increased by 1200%. And as a result, I doubled my income. So of course I did not take a 1200% increase in bookings because then I would literally be working every single weekend and I don't want to do that. But I was able to take on way more than I had before. So I doubled my income and I worked half of the amount of time I did before. So I actually took on 13 additional weddings and I worked half of what I did in 2015. So that was really, really incredible. So now I just wanted to tell you guys that you can grow and scale and all those benefits. But now let's just quickly talk about why workflows are important. So number one, it ensures that you are giving a consistent and universal client experience to every client that walks in the door. So like I just said, if you are wanting to grow your business and break into the medium to high end market in photography, then you absolutely have to be giving a wonderful client experience. And I mean, any stage in your business, I think all of us as solopreneurs, we're super passionate about our businesses. So I know that you guys listening to this, since you've signed up, that means that you want to grow your business and better your business and your photography. So I know that you want to give a really incredible client experience and workflows are an incredible way to do that. So in addition to that, by doing things the same way every single time, you're able to quicken the process as you do it more and more. So once you write it out, you can start to see all the holes in your process and fill them. Like, for example, I did this exercise that just basically I laid my workflow out and any of the client touch points that I had or points of contact with email, I rated it whether it was a good client experience or a bad client experience or not necessarily bad, but just not great. And then I figured out where I could improve. So for example, I send, uh, I last year ran into the issue that I had a Catholic ceremony with a receiving line. And I also had about 45 minutes of travel between locations from prep to ceremony and ceremony to reception. And the couple only had an eight hour contract. And when I was making the timeline, I was like, Oh, they kind of need nine and a half to 10 hours of coverage. And then I kind of felt like the bad guy because I was asking them for more money at that point when that should have been something that I had figured out in the beginning for them. And made them realize that they needed the amount of time that I was suggesting. So now after that scenario, I didn't want that to happen again. I didn't want to feel like the bad guy asking them for more money. So now I actually create timelines for my couples within a month of them booking, or I create a suggested timeline. And then we flesh it out in more detail four months before the wedding, when they have a little more details from their venue and all of that. But I just didn't want to run into the situation again where I had to ask somebody for money because I didn't do my job of figuring out what package they desired. And I don't want my couples to have to choose between reception coverage or bridal prep. So it was really important to me to cover both, but at the same time, they did need more time. So I was able to just find an additional way to fill that hole in my workflow or fill that lull in the client experience. Once I had it written out, I could see like where the pain points were and where the issues were. And then in addition to that, once you have your written workflow, you can find additional ways to automate it, streamline it, make it more efficient. So now that we know why they're important, I want to just share with you guys what all the benefits are. And these are benefits that my students have seen in some of my programs and my mentees and myself. So some of the benefits 
are huge, huge, huge time savings, a better client experience, more referrals from word of mouth. As I mentioned, my referrals increased by 1200% when I started using my current workflow. I had reduced overwhelm and I know that my students have as well. I feel on top of my to-do list every day. I did not get burnt out this season, even though I shot 25 weddings. I felt like I was on top of everything. I wasn't handling too much. I didn't feel like I was drowning in my business. And as a result, I was able to take more time off. I actually took off all of July and all of November. And another couple added benefits are is, is that you're able to easily train team members. So when I decided that it was time to bring on my mom to the team and bring on a virtual assistant, I was able to just give them my workflow and give them my procedures and they were able to kind of train themselves. So makes it super, super easy to do that. And I was able to then spend more time on higher value ad activities. So if my assistant was helping me with formatting blog posts and saving me, you know, an hour or two a week, or my mom helping me with album design, then that meant to me that I could take on more work because I had more hands on deck to help me with the back end of things. So I was able to do things that brought in more money and they then became a return on investment. So I think that's one of the holdups that most people have about outsourcing is that they can't afford it. But as long as you are spending the time saving that you have from outsourcing to other people, as long as you're spending that wisely on things that will bring in more income, then outsourcing should always be a return on investment. So that's just one quick note on outsourcing. But in addition, workflow allows you to spend more time with your family, your friends, self-care, and the other things that set your heart on fire. And you can finally be the CEO of your business instead of just an employee. So I just want to drive home that a more efficient business means a more scalable business, period. And I think we've talked about a lot of those ways of why workflow helps you grow and scale. So now let's just talk about how you can basically take your workflow once you have it created and put it on steroids. So once you have it in place, you can begin to write out all the procedures of how things are done. So I used to call this a procedure manual, and then I felt like that was super techy and nobody would understand, but now I call it a playbook because that sounds way more fun. But basically, I wrote out exactly how I do every single task on my workflow. I wrote out all the email templates I needed, all the hows of the tasks, the subtasks. I created video recordings of how I did certain things, and I actually put it into a playbook. It's called the Wedding Photographer's Playbook. It's available in my shop, and... I've had a couple hundred people go through it and say that they have been able to save up to 30 hours off of their wedding workflow. So again, once you write out the how, it just makes it so much easier to start growing and scaling your team and your business. So once I had all of that figured out, I had a manual that I could train other people with. So I was able to ask for help. And then I took it one step further. And I put it into my CRM, which I use HoneyBook. And I absolutely love HoneyBook. They have a workflow and a task management section. So once I built my workflow and applied it to all my clients, now I can just log in every day into the task management section and see exactly what I have to do across every single client. So it's really incredible. At this time, I have 73 active clients in HoneyBook. So there is just no possible way I could keep all of those tasks in my head. So... I have done that across the board on every single client. I've added the proper workflow, whether it's wedding, engagement, portrait, mentoring. So I have added the workflow now just every single day. HoneyBook makes a to-do list for me. So it's really, really awesome. And if you guys don't have a CRM that you are in love with, then I definitely encourage you to check it out. And if you want to, you can use the link on the screen. It's my personal referral link. So if you just go to share.honeybook.com slash G S G C G, you'll get a 14 day free trial and a 50% off code. So I would love to, you know, help you guys out with that if you have any questions, but I absolutely love them and they have just been a huge asset to bringing my workflow even more elevated. So at the end of the day, having a workflow in place allows you to focus your time on the money-making activities, like I said, I can go shoot more, I can market more, I can network, versus the business maintenance activities such as formatting blog posts and designing albums and all of the back-end things that of course need to be done, but maybe not necessarily by you. So again, once, um, once you decide to take your workflow and build it into your CRM, this allows you to manage clients efficiently, 
It allows you to automate things. So now I can automate emails going out, questionnaires going out. It allows me to streamline, get everything out of my head, and it ensures nothing slips through the cracks because I think computers are much better at keeping track of things than we are in our heads. So me having it in HoneyBook just allows me to know exactly what needs to be done every day. And I know that all of the steps are in my workflow and everything is going to trigger properly. So everything gets taken care of, nothing gets through the cracks, and again, I'm able to manage dozens of clients at once. And currently, like I said, I'm managing between 72 and 73 clients, so it's just really incredible once you start growing your business. And I did not always start out having a workflow or having it this set up, I guess you could call it. I used to just have a Google Sheet and I would make X's once I did things, um, but once I got past five clients, that was just not working anymore. So I definitely encourage you guys, once you have your workflow created, to put it into HoneyBook or 17 Hats, Tave, Dubsado, any type of system that you use. I encourage you to utilize it to the most, the highest ability that you can use that software because these softwares are super, super powerful and most people only use them for like contracts, invoices, and payments. So I definitely encourage you to take your workflow to the next level and you will save so much time and you'll be so, so happy you did. So next, I just want to talk to you guys about what it means to be proactive versus reactive. So I actually polled a couple hundred photographers in my community and I asked how they operate day to day. And 70% of them said that they feel like their day is spent jumping from one fire to the next and never getting anything of great importance done. So I flipped this on its head and I encourage you to do the same. So I decided that I absolutely had to run my business proactively versus reactively. And this can come in many forms, but basically it boils down to the fact that you are deciding to run your business anticipating any challenges or questions. So I do this in the following ways. I'm just going to give you guys five examples of how I do it. And I think I do this probably about 25 times throughout the client process, but here are five really good examples for you guys. So as soon as a couple books, I send them a wedding guide in the mail, extensively detailing what to expect in their wedding experience. I also create a sample timeline, as I mentioned, within a month of them booking so that we don't run into problems down the road, like I did last year. I email vendor recommendations right after my couple's book, so not only am I being their photographer, but I'm also kind of helping them plan their wedding and show that I am a trusted vendor in the area. And I also send them a link to a blog post I wrote about what to wear for their engagement session 30 days before their session. And then four months out from the wedding, I get all the vendor contact info and all of the wedding info from their wedding and vendor questionnaire so that I can send vendors the timeline, the blog post, and gallery links to them as needed. So I don't want to be the vendor that people, or I don't want to be the photographer that other wedding vendors as part of the wedding team are asking, hey, do you have any pictures? I would love to see pictures from this wedding. So I'm very proactive about that. And I send them the blog post, the timeline, the gallery links as soon as they are ready. So that just gives them such a better experience and then they're able to use them on their social medias. So those are just five ways that I am proactive in my business. And I definitely encourage you guys to figure out where you can be proactive because it'll save you so much time. And since I have all my email templates built out and everything is coming from a proactive place, I actually don't get any questions at all in my inbox from couples. I'm never asked like, hey, where are the pictures? Hey, what should we wear for our engagement session? Because everything is proactive before they even ask that. So I'm answering their questions before they ask it because I don't want to be reacting to something if I can be proactive about it. And in order to figure out how to be proactive, I encourage you guys to figure out what challenges or questions your clients are frequently asking and build them into your workflow so that you can be more proactive in your business model as well. And then finally, I want to talk to you guys about working smarter, not harder. So this can happen in many different ways, but today I'm specifically going to talk to you about your marketing efforts. And I know this is not necessarily in regards to workflow, but it is in regards to your workload, which I think workflow helps with your workload. So I just want to talk really, really quick about the 80-20 rule. And I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it. It's called Pareto's principle. principle and it states that 20% of our inputs result in 80% of our outputs. So 80% of revenue comes from 20% of customers. 80% of distractions come from 20% of sources. 80% of sales come from 20% of your marketing. So I'm going to give you guys an example. I know that now that we have social media and blogs and just 
so many different ways to market. There are so many platforms and people saying, you know, use my platform, use Pinterest, use Instagram. You have to be on Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest and Snapchat and be using video marketing and writing newsletters and meeting clients for coffee and vendors for lunch and doing a hundred other things. But as a solopreneur, we just don't have time for all of that. So I just want to make something clear to you guys. You do not have to be on all platforms at all times and doing everything that everyone else is doing to be successful. Find the platforms that work for you and capitalize and maximize your efforts on those platforms. So for example, a couple weeks ago, I made, I'm calling it a family tree for lack of better word, but I made a, a chart, a flow chart, I guess you could call it a diagram of where all of my weddings have come from since I started in 2013. So I had the referral source at the top and then kind of just trickle down if that person or that thing had gotten me a wedding. So Facebook would be a referral source, for example. And I would put all the weddings that came from Facebook. And then I would, if one of those clients referred me to somebody else, I would put another indented line that Michelle referred me to Amy. So Amy would therefore also fall under Facebook if Michelle came from Facebook. So I did this for all my weddings. And what I found for me was that 17 weddings have been brought through Facebook for me and four weddings came from Instagram. So to just do some easier math, let's say 16 from Facebook, four from Instagram. So if you do that math, that's a four to one ratio, which is an 80 to 20 ratio. So 80% of my weddings have come from Facebook and 20% from Instagram. So clearly to me, that shows that I should be continuing to spend my time on Facebook because it's really working for me. And I know most people hate Facebook. I just am very consistent on it, which is why I think it works for me. But some people are killing it in, at Instagram. So I would encourage you to figure out what platforms you love and what platforms have been the most fruitful to you and continue capitalizing on that momentum. So just think about how you can maximize the 80% in your systems and work smarter. So I know that wasn't completely related to workflow, but I hope that helps for you because I am just all about working smarter, not harder. And workflow is one of the ways I do that. This is another way that I do that. So I want to leave you guys with one tip. Um, basically, I just want to say that systems and workflows can come in any shape or form. I have systems for content creation, for brainstorming, for blogging, client work such as weddings and portraits, scheduling meetings, client inquiry meetings, and so much more. And I have seen so many benefits of having workflows and systems, which we already talked about today. But mostly it allows me to work on my business and not in it. And it allows me to scale without the overwhelm, the burnout, the stress. And I want to leave you guys with one tip today because I could probably continue talking about workflow for like 10 more hours and I know nobody would listen. So one more tip is that do not wait for clients to come in the door or bookings to be at capacity before putting your systems, workflows, and processes into place. Because that's what I did after I hit burnout. I was like, there just has to be a better way. And I really wish that I had set this up earlier in my business. And I just feel like everything would have been so much easier. But workflows and systems, you guys, are honestly the keys to building a sustainable business without the stress, the overwhelm, and the impending burnout that a lot of us are on track for. So I can't wait to see how your business grows this year. If you guys have any questions at all about workflows and systems, this is exactly what I teach over at Lorely Creative. And oh, before I leave, I actually want to tell you guys that I have another gift for you. If you guys don't want to create workflows for yourself, I know it takes a very long time. I spent about four months figuring out my workflow and figuring out all the holes and figuring out where to be proactive. If you guys want to just jumpstart all of that, I have a coupon for you guys if you use Photo Brand Summit 10 in my shop at lauraleecreative.com slash shop, you can get 10% off any workflow template, any email template, any checklist in the shop. And you'll also find my best-selling product that all my students have absolutely loved. And that is the Wedding Photographer's Playbook, which I briefly mentioned before. And my students have been saving up to 30 hours on every single wedding workflow. So if you're a wedding photographer and that would be super helpful for you and you want to see those kinds of results in your business, so you can take that 30 hours and spend it with your family and your friends and the people that you love, then I definitely encourage you to check out the shop for the playbook as well. But thank you guys so, 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 so much for listening to this talk today. And I hope you have an incredible experience listening to all the other amazing talks at this brand summit. 
and I hope that your business flourishes and is everything that you hope it will be in 2018. So thank you guys so much. If you want to follow along with me, my Instagram is at Lauralee Creative, and you can probably find just about every link that you'll possibly need up in my link and profile on Instagram. So that's at Lauralee Creative, and I hope to see some new friends over there. So thank you guys.